Judges chapter 3. These are the nations which Adonai allowed to remain, in order to put to the test all the people of Israel who had not known any of the wars with Kenan. This was only so that the generations of Israel who had previously known nothing of war might learn about it. These nations consisted of the five chiefs of the Pelishtim, all the Kenani, the Zidoni, and the Hivi who lived in the hills of the Levanon between Mount Bar al Hermon and the entrance to Hamat. They stayed there to test whether Israel would pay attention to the mitzvot of Adonai, which, through Moshe, he had ordered their ancestors to obey. The Judge Othniel so the people of Israel lived among the Kenani, Hitti, Amori, Pritzi, Hivi and Yavusi, taking their daughters as their wives, giving their own daughters to their sons and serving their gods. Thus the people of Israel did what was evil from Adio and Ai's perspective, forgot Adonai their God, and served the Baalim and Asherim. Therefore the anger of Adonai blazed against Israel, and he gave him over into the hands of Cushan Rishatim king of Aram Naharim, and the people of Israel served Cushan Rishatim eight years. But when the people of Israel cried out to Adonai, Adonai raised up a savior for the people of Israel, and he rescued them. This was Othniel the son of Kalev's younger brother Kenaz. The spirit of Adonai came upon him, and he judged Israel. Then he went out to war, and Adonai gave Cushan Rishatim king of Aram into his hands. His power prevailed against Cushan Rishatim. So the land had rest for forty years, until Othniel the son of Kenaz died. The judged Ehud. But the people of Israel again did what was evil from Adio and Ai's perspective. So Adonai strengthened Eglon the king of Moab against Israel, because they had done what was evil from Adio and Ai's perspective. In confederation with the people of Ammon and Amalek, Eglon went out and defeated Israel capturing the city of Date Palms. And the people of Israel served Eglon the king of Moab 18 years. But when the people of Israel cried out to Adonai, Adonai raised up for them a savior, Ehud the son of Gera, from the tribe of Binyamin, a left-handed man. The people of Israel appointed him to take their tribute to Eglon the king of Moab. Ehud made himself a double-edged sword 18 inches long and strapped it to his right thigh under his clothes. Then he presented the tribute to Eglon king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. When he had finished presenting the tribute, he dismissed the people who had brought it. But he himself, after reaching the quarries at Gilgal, went back and said, King, I have a secret message for you. The king commanded silence, and all his attendants withdrew. Ehud came to him. He was sitting alone by himself in his upstairs room, where it was cool. Ehud said, I have a message from God for you, as the king arose from his seat. Ehud reached out with his left hand, took the sword from his right thigh, and thrust it into the king's belly. The hilt too went in after the blade, and the fat closed around the blade, for he did not draw the sword out of his belly, so that it came out behind. Then Ehud went out onto the porch, shut the doors of the upstairs room behind him and locked them. After Ehud had left, the king's servants came. 
Seeing that the doors of the upper room were locked, they said, he must be relieving himself in the inner part of the cool room. They waited until they became embarrassed, but he still didn't open the doors of the upstairs room. So they took the key and opened them, and there before them lay their master, dead on the ground. But while they were delaying, Ehud escaped. He passed beyond the quarries and arrived safely in Sarah. Upon arrival in the hills of Ephraim, he began sounding the call on the shofar, and the people of Israel went down with him from the hill country. He himself took the lead. He said to them, Follow me, because Adonai has given your enemy Moab into your hands. They went down after him, seized the fords of the Yarden opposite Moab and permitted no one to cross. On that occasion they defeated Moab, some ten thousand men, all tough, experienced soldiers, not one of them escaped. Thus was Moab subdued that day under the power of Israel, then the land had rest for eighty years. The Judge Shamgar After Ehud came Shamgar the son of Anud, who killed 600 P L I S H T I M with an ox goat, and he too rescued Israel 